Welcome back, outsiders. I'm here in the rugged Zor Valley to explore some examples of topographic map features. In my previous videos, I've gone over basic land navigation, including how to read topographic maps. We went over several features like hills, cliffs, valleys, and spurs. And I thought it would be a great idea to come to Zor Valley, which is rich in all of those features, to show you examples of those topographic features on a map and what they look like in real life. It's kind of a dreary morning, but I came here because I got a new GoPro 8 and I wanted to try out some of the features. I tried a time lapse of a sunrise. It wasn't a great sunrise. There's some cool fog in my background here. I'm hoping that uh, the GoPro 8 is a much better picture and much better audio than my previous Hero 6 and more reliable. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm starting the day on what's called the knife's edge, which is a really cool topographic feature, pretty unique geological feature in Zor Valley. And I would classify this as a spur. If you take a look at the map, you can see a bunch of U's as they go downhill with steep drop-offs on both sides of me. You can see it's a pretty narrow knife's edge going down. And if we look on either side, we have some pretty steep drop-offs. Zor Valley is so rich in topographic features. Behind me is what I would consider a cliff. We have a flat plateau at the top. We have the Cataraugus Creek at the bottom and this very steep cliff and before the fog completely takes it away, if we look right here, there's another cliff face even steeper than the one over here. Just goes straight down to the Cataraugus Creek. I could spend all day at this knife's edge, but let's go check out some other topographic features. We traveled the rim of the gorge, going up and down a few features, and we've come to our first major ravine or valley. Take a look at the map, we're approximately right here. And now if we take a look at the direction of the V's, we can see that the points of the V's are pointing uphill and the openings of the V's are pointing downhill, opening up to the gorge. And if we take a look at this ravine, we can see the water is flowing in this direction towards the gorge. So we've continued down the rim of the gorge and we've come to another ravine or valley and we can see the water flowing towards the gorge. So uphill must be that way. If we take a look at the map, we are right about here and we can take a look at the V's formed by this valley. The points are going uphill towards what's called Hokum Pond. This is the outlet of Hokum Pond making what is called Hokum Falls. And you can see the openings of the V's are opening up towards the gorge. And if you take a look at the contour lines, they get closer and closer together, creating what's called Hokum Falls. So one thing as you're looking at your topographic map, look at the contour indexes and figure out your contour interval. On the map that I was using today, it's a 20 foot contour interval. So there's 100 feet between each index, divided by five gives me 20 feet. There's a lot of ups and downs and a few ravines that I cross that I didn't see on the map. And the reason for that is the elevation change for those ups and downs and those ravines is less than 20 feet. So your hike might actually be harder than what you're looking at on the topographic map, depending on the scale. The map I'm using is a USGS map with a one to 24,000 scale. So if you had a larger scale map that gives you more detail, you may see some of those ups and downs because your contour interval was gonna be less than the 20 feet that is on the map that I'm using. 
And behind me is a relatively flat, kind of just rolling hills, grasslands. It'll be indicated on the map with not a lot of contour lines going through it. And also perhaps some white areas showing lack of vegetation or no vegetation. And uh, corresponds to this area. So we are now on the south side of the gorge in the Valentine Flats area, and this has some pretty unique features. What I'm standing on right now is called Point Peter. It's another nice edge, a spur that goes out into the gorge with the Cataraugus Creek below. Just pay attention to the signs, the DEC, due to erosion, doesn't want you to come anywhere past the point I am right now. And if we look out into the area, we are right here on the map at Point Peter. The creek's below us. Straight ahead is what's called the confluence and the giant fluted cliffs. The south branch goes off to the right. The main branch comes from the left. This area below us here, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of contour lines. It is called Valentine Flats. Then, if you look off into the distance, you see a hill. That is the pyramid. That's our next destination. Uh, it's a really cool climb up and some of the greatest views of Zor Valley. So I'm now in Valentine Flats. You can see it's very, very flat. And immediately there's a lot of wildlife down here. Just got scared by a deer. I think he scared me as much as I scared him and just saw a few turkeys heading towards the creek. I am on the banks of Cataraugus Creek and what's really cool about this particular section is we have Point Peter right there, that knife's edge coming down. We have an awesome cliff and also a knife edge coming off of the cliff right here. We are at the base of what's called the pyramid here in Zor Valley. It's a pretty unique geological feature. It's a hill, but on, it has three steep sides. One of them's a sheer cliff that drops down into Cataraugus Creek. It's a pretty good climb, not super dangerous. It narrows to about 15 feet wide at the top. We're gonna head on up there. But first, let's figure out how high the pyramid actually is. Okay, so I'm looking at the map. We are right here at the map and you can see how it's a triangle that comes to a point and our contour interval is 20 on this map if we look at the contour indexes they go from 1000 to 900 a difference of 100 feet divided by five contour intervals 20 and since we are at the base of the pyramid i see one contour interval less than 900 so we are sitting at approximately 880 feet above sea level. Could be as low as 861 feet. We don't see another index line at the peak of the pyramid, so that tells me the top of the pyramid is 980 feet. So we've got about 100 to 120 foot climb to the top of the pyramid. And that kind of jives with the descriptions I've heard of the sheer cliff down to the Cataraugus Creek of being about 120 feet. We are now on top of the pyramid. As you can see, it's a very steep cliff going down to Cataraugus Creek. What I love about the spring, not only is there a lot of life and plants coming up, the leaves haven't come in yet. And on days like this, you get some pretty good views. Behind me is what's called Bear Butt Falls. You can kind of see the ravine and it's not flowing really, really hard, but you can just make out the water flowing down a waterfall there. So we would have our classic V shape, points going uphill, the V's opening up downhill. Then on this side, we have what's called the confluence, and we have the main branch of Cataraugus Creek to my left, and then the south branch is curling around to my right. And 
right in the middle is the confluence. They're called the giant fluted cliffs. We're gonna go get a better look of those. But what we can also see here, obviously there's cliffs all around and our contour lines are really, really close. But we're also seeing what's called skinny dip falls. Again, if we look at the map, we can see the classic V's going uphill and then that sharp drop off in contours creating that waterfall. There's so many cool places in Zor that I've explored and some new places that I found, but I gotta tell you, this is by far my favorite spot. It's a little bit of an effort to get up here, but it's so worth it. Okay, so now we are down in the confluence. We're down in the gorge. We're at the lowest point, Cataraugus Creek. Confluence Rapids, good ride through there. Behind me here is what's called the Giant Fluted Cliffs. We have the south branch coming this way, main branch right there, and you can see Skinny Dip Falls. So now if we position ourselves on our topo map, we're right about here, and you can see the cliffs, very steep, correspond to the cliffs behind me here. We see Skinny Dip Falls, and just as a point of reference, those cliffs coming down right there was that cliff edge coming down the pyramid. You can see it on the map right here. And just like the pyramid, let's figure out how tall this cliff is behind me. Now let's orient our map to be the right way. Okay, so I got bare butt falls over my shoulder this way, giant fluted cliffs, the south branch. So we have got our map oriented the right way. So the lowest index line I'm seeing is 900 and it looks like there's two contours to where we are right now so that means we're at 880 feet again but on the other side here we've got i see an index line up to 1100 and then there's a 1200 and then a, one more contour line right above that so that's 1220 that's uh, 360 feet, so that's a pretty good drop, pretty good cliff right there. Pretty spectacular to see. Could be as high as 380 feet there. So I know the gorge here ranges from 400 to 300 feet, so pretty cool, pretty amazing area. Very, very rich in geological features. I hope you enjoyed exploring topographical features of maps with me here in Zor Valley. We hit some pretty good ones. We had some cool spurs, hills, cliffs, and valleys. We also got to see some pretty unique geological features like the Valentine Pyramid and a couple of those knife's edges. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. If you wanna see other gear how-tos, other outdoor adventures, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.